It's the Incendio here, back again. Uh, we're going to take a look at the second mission in the game uh, of Tom Clancy's The Division. This is our Let's Play and Discuss series. We're going to take a look at the Hudson Refugee Camp, which is where I'm standing right now. Uh, second mission in the game, as I said, uh, there's a level 7 requirement uh, or recommendation to get in the mission. Obviously, you know, we've beaten the game already, I've beaten the game already, and uh, we are going to try out Hudson Refugee Camp. So here we go. Uh, let's go ahead and replay the mission. We're going to replay it on hard, and we're going to get the intro. Agent, we, meaning Dr. Candle, need you to secure the Hudson Rail Yards area. The yards have become a tent city for the destitute and desperate. The people forced out of every place else end up here. What we're looking for is blood samples from those refugees. Clean ones, sick ones, and ones who might have survived the dollar flu for Dr. Candle to work her magic on. So if you secure the site, we can do the rest. Alright, so we have to secure this refugee site, essentially. Uh, not a big deal, uh, but let's do it. Phase one was a success. Repeat, phase one, success. Flow steady, tank held solid. Roger that, good to hear. You boys got Hudson Yard clean count numbers for phase two? 263 confirmed infected, 47 possible, currently asymptomatic. Copy, 263 infected, 47 possible. We got enough to cover the whole deal? Gotcha. Of course, we're gonna take out the whole train yard in the process. Well, we do what we have to do. How many healthy enough to run, you think? I guess 10% of the total shanty population. Uh, call it 40 runners, give or take. Light up the yard and the rats will run for cover. Copy that. Double up the blockade and lock down the perimeter. And I mean tight. The yards will be sanitized. No exceptions. Alright, so that's our lengthy intro to this mission. Um, I didn't show that last time, but essentially what you have is you'll have an explanation from uh, Faye Lau at the base. She'll tell you about what the mission's about, and then uh, you'll hear... Uh, something that's overheard from some of the enemies in the base. Uh, right now we're going to be fighting against one of the factions in... Agent, it's Dr. Candle. I want to stress to you the vital importance of safeguarding any civilians you may come across. The math says some of those people must have survived the dollar flu. That means they've got antibodies to it that I need to have a hope in hell of fighting this thing. And the ones who are just sick, having a broader genetic diversity of virus samples will help us track the virus's rate of mutation. Which is a long way to say, keep those people alive until I get what I need from them. Got that? Great. That's just a lot of explanation in the beginning. As I started to say, uh, you're going to have... Uh, the normal mission intro from someone at the base, Fei Lao, who's the uh, commanding officer, as it were. And you're also going to hear some audio clips of the whatever faction is taking control of that part of the city. Right now, it's going to be the cleaners. It's one of four factions. Uh, we're just going to take a look at this echo, which essentially gives us a look back in time at what happened at one point or another. There are also collectible echoes, but uh, oh, essentially this... God, I think I'm going to be sick. Hey! It's this or nothing. These uh, these scenes are going to play out. Uh, the audio is actually really good on these. It makes you feel like the scene is in motion, even though it's obviously just a still image. You can walk through it and things like that. Um, I'm not going to focus too much on that. Uh, you know, to get the full story of the game, obviously you should play the game. Uh, so we're going to just move forward here. So part of what I'm going to do in this episode. I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience uh, with the game, uh, some of my thoughts about the game overall. It's only been out for about three and a half weeks now. Uh, I think it'll be a month next week, something like that. I believe it was March 8th that it came out. Uh, it's only been out for about a month, so I'm going to talk about where the game kind of sits right now, uh, what my expectations were coming into it, how I first found out about it, uh, what's been changed in the game so far overall, uh, and uh, Kind of go a little bit more in-depth as far as some of the systems and mechanics that you might see in the game and things that you might see me utilize uh, without me even explaining them. Uh, so when the game was first shown uh, in 2013, um, I remember either seeing, I don't know if I saw the full E3 trailer or I, uh, I saw some press coverage of it at the time. It's probably uh, online at that time. might have been a magazine like Game Informer or something like that. Um, really big into the Rainbow Six. Faye tells me the cleaners are holding the entire tent city prisoner. That's what it looks like, and it fits the cleaner MO. If you wanted to eradicate every last vestige of detectable virus, where would you go? 
wherever the biggest concentrations are. Refugee camps, shanty towns. Jesus, you don't think they. Alright, so solution. Oh, she's not stopping. Effective. Sure, if you're a genocidal maniac. You ever wonder if we even deserve to survive this thing? Every day, Doctor. Every day. Good luck, Agent. Alright, so hopefully they're done talking now. Uh, as I said, I'm on fire right now. I'm just gonna run through this. Um, as I said, I you know I was a big fan of the Rainbow Six uh, Vegas series. I've been playing Tom Clancy games probably for as long as I can remember. Um, the early Rainbow Boy, Sixes. Contamination levels increasing. You hear that, Agent? You're walking into the teeth of it now. Don't forget what I said about keeping any infected refugees alive. I mean, obviously you're gonna try to keep them all alive, but I need those virus samples, and I really need viable antibody samples from survivors. So keep them extra alive, I guess. You know what I'm saying. I'm going back to work now. Candle out. There's just a lot of exposition this early into the game. Um, that's understandable considering it's the second mission, but playing through it for the uh, you know fifth, sixth, seventh, or like tenth time on this mission is uh, it kind of gets redundant. Um, so back to what I was saying. Sorry about that. Um, really big into the whole Tom Clancy series, uh, and then when I saw this was going to be a third-person cover-based shooter, um, I really love the Rainbow Six uh, Vegas games, uh, and they are uh, obviously first-person games. Um, but when you go into cover, uh, like this, uh, your character goes third person. Obviously, it's a little bit more zoomed in. Um, but I really like that aspect of it. When I saw that this was going to be a third person cover based shooter, I was really, really interested in it. Uh, I didn't hear too much about the game, and I really didn't seek it out as I would other titles and really track it down. Uh, I kind of knew that it was something that was coming out and I was waiting for. And probably within the last year, year and a half, or something like that, um, as pretty much is with every game. Uh, that doesn't get delayed or canceled crazily. Um, a lot of uh, information was disseminated, and you know you started to kind of see the whole the whole picture of what the game was about. Um, obviously, when they first showed the game, there were many things that didn't make it into the game, and I can talk about that at a uh, another time. Um, but that happens with a lot of games too. Um, sometimes games totally change shape or change form uh, over time, also. Um, so obviously uh, that was the reason I was interested in the game. Big fan of the series. Uh, big fan of third base, uh, third person cover base shooters. Also, Gears of War is uh, up there on one of my favorite game series too. Um, so I was interested in what the division had to offer. Um, I didn't realize it at first. Uh Warning: chemical signature of explosives detected. I didn't realize at first that it was going to be confirmed. It's napalm B, all right. With that much capacity, they must be planning to burn out the whole damn yard. And when they do, they're going to kill every last refugee in that shanty town. We need that tank moved somewhere safe. Just so much talking, I can't even get a thought across. I didn't realize it was going to be uh, the game that it ended up being. Uh, I didn't realize it was going to be so loot-based. Um, there's not a problem with that, because I've played you know, MMOs and RPGs a lot. Um, not as much as some other people, but uh, you know played World of Warcraft and games like that, uh, so I kind of understood, you know, what the inherent systems in the game were going to be. Um, a lot of people compare this game to Destiny. Uh, it's a comparison that I don't really exactly see. Um, don't have I don't have Destiny in its fullest form. I have played a trial of it, and I don't know too much about it other than, you know, the basics of what there is to know. Um, but I, I never really got into it. Uh, I really haven't given it a fair shot. Not that I dislike it or anything, but you know, I look forward to playing that eventually. But I don't really don't see the comparison outside of the fact that it's a game with shooting mechanics that has loot and you know has missions that you can repeat and has a group system. I mean, there are a lot of games that are like that. So I don't know if the comparison is uh, really valid. Uh, nor is it really fair to say that this game is better or worse uh, or equal to Destiny. Uh, better or worse than or equal to Destiny. Um, I really don't think that that's a fair comparison uh, because they're very different games. It's an apples and oranges type of thing. Uh, but kind of going back to my interest in the game, um, probably over the last year or so I was really trying to follow up on it. I didn't want to read too much into it because I didn't want to spoil anything. I think she's going to talk here. No, surprisingly, we don't get any uh, dialogue there. It's interesting. Um, 
So in the month leading up to the game, I try to stay as kind of uh, knowledgeably neutral as I could to make sure that I was, you know, pleasantly or unpleasantly surprised with the game uh, as it was on release. Can't really hit that guy there. I'm going to move down. Uh, but I have to say I was pleasantly, uh, not so much surprised, but I was uh, pleasantly kind of validated uh, in saying that, you know, it was going to be a game that would uh, capture my, and hold my interest. I'm not sure why I'm on fire. Um, yeah, nothing is on fire around me, so I don't know what really happened there, but we're going to let it slide. It, uh, the game held my interest, and, you know, I, I, uh, am really up on top of it. I'm looking forward to some of the changes that are coming soon. I'm always pausing at these parts, because I know that there's a very long piece of dialogue when I get over there. Um, so I'm not going to talk for about 40 okay, seconds. Here it is. As soon as you lock the situation down, I've got a joint Sarah JTF strike force ready to move in. They'll take samples from as many refugees as they can find. Medical personnel? A couple of EMTs in the mix, Doctor? Yes. A couple? As in only two? The rest are first team certified. They know how to tap a vein. Get going, Edge. Without contaminating the samples, I assume. Or infecting themselves. Yes. I'll take your word for it. Thank you, Doctor. Get moving, Agent. This is Dr. Candle, sampling team, can you hear me? Go ahead, Doctor. Oh, Lieutenant, good, listen. I need you guys to log intake info from everybody you get a sample from. Age, gender, ethnicity, general state of health on a 10-point scale. Then label and group the samples according to... Excuse me, Doctor, but maybe this could wait until we get confirmation the op is actually complete. You saying you don't have faith in your agent? Just focusing on the task at hand. Lieutenant, you'll radio the doctor as soon as the area is secured. Yes, ma'am. Don't worry, doctor. We'll get it all worked out. I hope so. It's only the survival of the human species we're talking about. All right, so there it is. They try to... Copy that, doc. Oh, boy. Hotel, help. They try to instill this quirkiness in some of the characters. Um, it ends up working, you know, decently sometimes, but it kind of falls flat. Uh, that time was, a, you know, that was a little bit entertaining the first time I heard all that. But, you know, in, uh, after, after repeat, oh, boy. after repeated viewings, that dialogue kind of gets old and tired, um, you know, I don't know, I, I, if they had different dialogue trees or, you know, even like an A and a B scenario for them to say different things, that would be pretty nice. Um, but they don't really have that. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend this to anybody that's watching now that's on the fence about it. I'm sure, I know that there's been a lot of coverage about the game recently. Kind of a, you know, kind of a big deal uh, right now as far as the gaming, you know, in the gaming uh, stratosphere there. Um, Definitely would recommend the game. This guy's yelling at me. Definitely would recommend the game to anybody who is a fan of the Tom Clancy games. Um, anyone who's a fan of Rainbow Six, especially some of the older ones. Um, I haven't played too much of Siege. I, ha I have played it, but I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, I had to give it another fair try. Uh, I recommend it to anybody who is into... Um, Cover-based mechanics, uh, Ghost Recon Future Soldier, Gears of War, um, boy, uh, I'm trying to think of what that series on PS2 was, it's, um, I'm gonna think of it later, it's gonna bother me, it's not Killzone, it's, uh, oh man, can't think of it right now, but there was a cover-based shooter, um, that guy's dead, that was quick, that was the boss, it was a cover-based shooter, uh, series on PS2 that I'm I'm not thinking of right now. So if anybody knows, just let me know. Uh, I'm gonna really feel bad about it. So we have to use this keypad to go up here. Uh, essentially, we had to. If you can find the crane controls, drop that tank someplace safe. So we had to clear out the entire refugee camp, which is what we did, and we moved all the way over here. We killed the boss. Now we have to drop a uh, 
an oil tanker that is suspended from a crane uh, that they were going to use to kind of obliterate the entire camp. Uh, the idea behind the cleaners, it's one of the factions that people we've been fighting with the flamethrowers, is that they're trying to eradicate the virus that's affecting New York City by burning everybody uh, alive, at that end alive, um, with fire. So uh, we're not going to let that happen. There we go. So that's the tanker right there. And uh, once we use this laptop, we will drop it. There it goes. That should do it, Agent. Solid work. Yes, good work. Now, sample team, listen up. Like I was saying, I'm gonna need those blood samples labeled and organized so we can track corroborating factors. Let's move this discussion to a different channel so we don't bore the agent. Yes, please do that. All right. Uh, so that's another one of the character building type of things that they have in this game. But yeah, definitely would recommend it for anybody who's a fan of any of those series that I mentioned before. Uh, Tom Clancy's series, Ghost Recon Future Soldier, Gears of War. And uh, that's really it for this mission. Uh, we're just going to release this fast rope and head down to the bottom. Um, so I hope you were able to get a good look at what the second mission in the game looks like. That's the Hudson Refugee Camp. And I talked a little bit about my thoughts on the game overall. And uh, looking forward to uh, what the game has in store. They have a whole full uh, year plan for the game. So we'll, uh, we'll see. Oh, this dog is like uh, angry at me or something. What's going on there? All right. Not sure what's going on there. Um, all right, so I wasn't expecting that, but uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed, and uh, I'll see you next time. Oh, let's help this uh, civilian here. Don't want her to keel over. You're able to, to give uh, civilians. Uh, this dog's still barking. You're able to give civilians um, some of your consumables in exchange for them dropping loot or money or something like that. But that's about all we have for the Hudson Refugee Camp, and my thoughts on the game. So I'll see you guys next time. Uh, we'll do the next mission in the game and we'll talk a little bit more. Catch you guys later.